Joe, I thought I'd start with you. Recently, we had another quarter point rate hike, interest rate hike from the Bank of Canada. Any thoughts about what this means for the country? Sure. The, the rate uh, is is the up to the highest rate, I guess, since uh, 2001 at, at four and three quarter percent because the uh, the economy, and it was a bit of a surprise, the consensus, I think, was that there, there wouldn't be a rate increase at this time. And uh, the economy has proved to be uh, more resilient uh, than, than some people uh, thought. And uh, the, the critical mandate, of course, of the, the bank is to wrestle down inflation. And inflation has gone up in the last month. So that's uh, uh, clearly what the, the bank's uh, focus was. Of course, the, the dilemma always is uh, when you're fighting, you're fighting inflation, you can move the economy into a recession. And, uh, and there are, of course, political implications as well to raising the rates. And the, the opposition Conservative Party has, has jumped on that because it is going to make life more unaffordable uh, for, for the average Canadian. Uh, but, of course, inflation does that also. So hence... Hence the the the, uh, the dilemma. It doesn't look like there's going to be any increases from uh, the Fed um, because I guess they're, they're, the data that uh, their central bank is is seeing is is not uh, is not as troublesome mm-hmm. uh, in terms of inflation as as Canada is. But we're in a period of some real uncertainty and and market volatility is is reflecting that. Indeed, indeed. Gary Marr, I'm going to switch gears. And obviously, uh, the other big news story in the last few weeks has been the Alberta provincial election. Uh, uh, the dust is starting to settle. What do you see as uh, really the big takeaways from that? Well, uh, it's a big change from uh, the 2019 result with a new premier who's at the head of the uh, uh, United Conservative Party. I think in most provinces in Canada, if you had an 11 seat majority, you'd feel pretty good about that. I'm not sure that's the history here in the province of Alberta, uh, where you had premiers who have served a long, long time and, and had very large majorities. Uh, but that hasn't really been the case in the last 10 years. There's a changing dynamic in the province of Alberta. I mean, uh, you know, Premier Manning was uh, the head of the social credit government for, um, you know, 26 years. Peter Lougheed uh, started the Progressive Conservative Party's run for 44 years. He served as Premier for 14 years. Premier Klein served for 14 years. And yet, you know, since 2011, I think we've had six Premiers since 2011. So uh, it's getting shorter and shorter. And so, It'll be interesting to see uh, how uh, Premier Smith is able to keep her caucus together. There are some uh, visible uh, cleavages within the party, largely along rural and urban lines. And so even though it's a majority government, uh, in some ways she may um, have to find herself governing as if it's a minority government or, or, uh, or a coalition government. Uh, making sure that everybody that's within her caucus is uh, well represented uh, in the agenda of the government of Alberta. So uh, I think she's capable of doing it. Uh, she uh, um, She's reached out uh, on some sort of efforts to uh, and, uh, and, and desires to reset the relationship with the federal government. Dominic LeBlanc, Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs from Ottawa, is uh, coming to Calgary in the next uh, uh, few uh, couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, uh, Minister LeBlanc wants to reset this relationship. So does the Premier. And, of course, um, all of us, uh, having been former politicians, know that the manner in which you campaign may be different than the way that you govern. And uh, so if uh, Premier Smith says she wants a reset, in the relationship with the federal government, I would take her at her face, sure. value that that's in fact what she wants. 